What's up guys, Ibra here with Hurricane X, and AMD has been on a roll lately, and it's about to continue with the recent launch of Ryzen and Threadripper forcing Intel's hand to launch Coffee Lake, Skylake X, and KB Lake X. Uh, there's a whole lot of completion in the CPU market. One of the few areas where Intel had some safety was in the notebook market, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat you guys on this, but AMD's APUs have struggled to uh, gain notebook designs, and there's a good reason for that. They're too power hungry, they run a lot hotter than Intel CPUs, and the performance outside of games was just terrible. Uh, things started to change around a little bit last gen from last generation, uh, but not in a meaningful way. Now that there's Zen, and you know there's some hope that this new architecture would bring some big things, uh, to the mobile space. So what has AMD done to change the game? Well, they've leveraged the powerful Ryzen processor design and combined it with Vega graphics compute units. The end result is a new line of APUs codenamed Raven Ridge, and notebooks with these new processors will be available very soon. Let's take a closer look right after a message from our sponsor. The Master of Vast Curved Gaming Monitor is now available measuring at 35 inches with 3440 by 1440p resolution at 100 hertz and FreeSync support with nice stand that can do portrait mode because why not? So join the drop with the link in the description below to get your game on. All right, guys, so AMD's intent is actually pretty ambitious. Even though they've been absent from the ultra portable segment for a really long time, they're hoping to put Ryzen processors into notebooks about this size, while offering better overall performance, more cores, and about the same power consumption as Intel's latest CPUs. That means Raven Ridge APUs are supposed to go up against KB Lake R, and that, my friends, could be really challenging. You can find our video about KB Lake R right over here, uh, but let me put that into context for you, since there needs to be a huge leap forward from the mobile FX9000 series. I mean, just looking at this chart gives you a good idea of how far behind AMD was not that long ago. To design a somewhat competitive notebook processors for thin and light ultrabooks, they needed to increase performance by between 40 and 50% on the GPU and CPU, while also lowering power needs by 50%. Even if those targets were hit, Intel would have been able to walk over Raven Ridge. But AMD decided to take things a bit further, and this is what they ended up achieving. Their first Zen-based APUs have CPU cores that are up to 200% faster than 7th generation processors, and graphics processing has been boosted up by 128%. Those are some seriously impressive numbers, but what really catches my attention is the power consumption, which was lowered by 58%. That means longer battery life and you can spend less time looking for a charging location, which was also always an issue with Bristol Ridge and earlier mobile APUs. At least initially, the mobile Ryzen processors will be available in two different forms, the Ryzen 7 2700U and Ryzen 5 2500U. Both will be based off quad-core 8-threaded layouts, but the 2700U will operate at higher frequencies. Both packages will be available in either a 15-watt configuration for the thin and light market, or 35 watts uh, for systems that have better cooling that can handle the added thermals. The integrated Vega graphics may have been based off a new architecture, but don't expect them to offer much in the way of performance in higher-end games. The 10 compute units paired with relative clock speeds of the Ryzen 7 graphics subsystem makes it roughly one-sixth as powerful as AMD's Vega 56. Okay, the GPU specifications don't really look impressive, but what do they mean for performance? Well, let's take a look at what AMD says, and remember, this is likely a best case scenario since Intel CPUs don't do all that well in DX12 applications right now. The win is huge, but even without taking a look at Intel, the new Ryzen 7 2700U absolutely destroys the older FX 9800P. That kind of jump from one generation to the next is just amazing. Even though the 2700U won't offer anything even closer to discrete graphics cards frame rates, if you lower the details enough, it can play some of today's most popular titles. But the problem I foresee is what happens when people want a bit more than this level of gaming performance. Remember, Intel and Nvidia have achieved some pretty amazing things by integrating efficient Pascal GPUs alongside KB Lake processors in thin and light notebooks. That paired was achieved with Intel's Optimus GPU switching technology, something that Raven Ridge APUs won't be compatible with. That leaves discrete Vega-based GPUs as the only other option, but we won't see those in thin and light notebooks anytime soon. The architecture is just too power hungry. On the CPU side, AMD sees their 2700U lining up well against the KB Lake R i7-8550U. 
That processor also has four cores and eight processing threads, while offering TDP values from 10 to 25 watts, depending on the configuration chosen by the system builder. In the chart you're seeing right now, there's no mention of which system the 2700U is installed into, but the Intel CPU is seated in an Acer Spin 5. That means we may very well be seeing an apples to orange comparison, but nonetheless, AMD wins clearly in multi-threaded applications like Cinebench. Single thread performance falls behind though. When the charts get the 2500U, the results remain pretty much the same with the AMD processors pulling ahead in multi-threaded benchmarks, but falling behind when less threads are needed. Remember, these are synthetic benchmarks, and if history is any indication from our testing of KB Lake versus Ryzen, real-world applications will be very tight. Even battery life seems to be pretty encouraging against their previous generation, but one thing that is conspicuous by its absence from this chart is an Intel processor. There isn't even any mention of the systems being used for both AMD APUs, but we'll assume they're identical. But one of the main problems with AMD's mobile processors has always been their availability. Announcements were made and products shown off, but actually finding them to buy was challenging. Many ended up being paper launched and nothing else. I'm hoping this time will be different since uh, there are already some thin and light notebooks in the works. HP will be introducing the 15 inch NVX360, uh, which has the Ryzen 5 2500U, up to eight gigabytes of dual channel memory, a huge 55 watt battery that packs just 19.5 millimeters thick. Lenovo will have a more compact 13.3 inch notebook called the IdeaPad 720S, which will have the option for either the 2700U or 2500U, but only a single channel memory. Luckily, that notebook is also super thin and will come with a fast NVMe SSD. Finally, the Acer Swift 3 seems to be the best of both worlds since it's light, thin, and comes with an IPS screen and dual channel memory. We're hoping to get our hands on these really soon, and I'm pretty excited about that. Well, there you guys have it, our quick overview on these new upcoming Ryzen mobile processors. While we only know a little bit about it right now, and of course the benchmarks was given to us by AMD, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. You see, competition is great, and especially in the thin and light notebook space, and if these new APUs can deliver at least 75% of what AMD claims, things are gonna get really interesting uh, for the rest of the year, and of course into 2018. So what do you guys think? Are these new Ryzen processors gonna make some inroads into a segment where Intel is still supreme? Would you consider buying an AMD notebook? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ebar with Hardworking X. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.